Welcome to OSM, Operation Safe Mode, peace be with you. This is my uh, spiritual and physical update uh, right before Christmas. This is Monday before Christmas and um, <clears throat> having a wonderful day. I feel completely uh, strong and, and I'm excited about the whole week that I will have uh, with um, good health. I think I'm going to have a lot of good energy coming into Christmas, so I'm really excited about that. And as I was preparing for uh, this update today, I was meditating upon Mary's Magnificat. And the Magnificat is Mary's song of praise that she speaks and sings, if you will, with her heart and her soul when she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And she says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon my loneliness and has raised me up. And I wanted to meditate upon that with you in regards to how I'm feeling right now. As Christmas is coming, how I'm feeling right now after being this long six months into chemotherapy. And what it has meant to me and your relationship with me uh, through this whole event. Mother Seton says, <clears throat> faith lifts the soul. Hope supports it. Experience says it must. And then most importantly, she says, and love says, just let it be. And I thought of Mary's heart proclaiming this truth, but her soul soaring with the reality of God's love for her. It was magnified, she said. And faith magnifies our soul. It lifts it up, as Mother Seton says. And I really believe that that part of my journey has been prayer. It has been my prayer, uh, just accepting God's will for what's happening, but it's been your prayer, your prayer for me, whether it be divine mercy every day, uh, the prayer that we offer together as a community at, at sacred mass, your private prayers. These are the things that lifts up one's soul because it strengthens their faith. And you've had such a big part in that. Over 2,000 people have been viewing these updates, and every one of you have said, in one way or the other, you've been praying for me. And I always say, I can feel that support, but when I read the Magnificat, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. I have to say that that's truly what I've experienced. It's not so much just you praying me through the illness, or even for the cure, which we're praying for God's miraculous gift, but how it's changed my priesthood and my desire when I feel like my soul is soaring because of the faith that we share. And it's friends from the past, it's neighborhood people that I've run into. Of course, it's our parishioners and, and other people who don't even know me who are praying because they've been watching the videos. And I even have all the North Huntington police officers praying for me. I know this because in my last traffic stop with one of the police officers, they intimated that they're all praying for me as well. And that means a lot to me. So once your faith, once that faith lifts up your soul, then you need the virtue of hope to support it. And just imagine allowing your soul to soar and being able to continue to allow your spirit to proclaim God. It takes hope in that what you're going through, whether it's an illness, a loss of a loved one, uh, that Hope in what Jesus has promised will allow us to continue. But that hope also <clears throat> is a human hope that people's faith gives you. And of course, the hope that I've gained is, is the reality of people supporting me and who I am through what I'm going to uh, experience in chemo. Many people have already gone through it, so they're helping me understand that by sharing their own experiences. But really, I have to say, my greatest hope in supporting my soul never to go down into depression or lose the reality of rejoicing in God uh, really comes with my best friend, Kathy Takis, and her husband, Ray. Many people have asked me, Father, how are you getting through this? You know, how are you doing this? And I never want to give the uh, preconceived notion that you know I'm this awfully strong person and I'm taking this whole thing on myself because that's not true. 
that Kathy has been with me for every blood draw, every chemotherapy, every doctor's appointment. Uh, she has helped me not only to have the proper kind of diet, but her friendship of 35 years and, and being a part of her family, I've spoken about their grandchildren many times, has given me that hope that my spirit, my soul can continue to go and soar and proclaim God, even though I'm not certain of what all this means. Uh, you know, I speak to you about it, but I really don't understand it. But knowing that that support is there, and mostly the support at the end of the day when I feel free to go to their home and rest. So I am blessed. And, and people say, you know, how do you do this? I, I could not be doing it without uh, Kathy's love and, and, and Ray's support in this whole ordeal. And I pray for those who are suffering that you all have somebody that you can count on to keep your spirits up uh, through, through hope. And then Mother Seton says, we know this is true about faith, our soul soaring, and hope supporting it by experiences. And my experiences is that I look to the Blessed Mother and think of her proclaiming this truth while she was still uh, newly uh, expecting the child Jesus. And all the events that she would have to go through, her spirit was always lifted up because her experiences showed one after the other that God was going to tend to her, to Joseph, and the child Jesus. That everything was going to go as God had planned. So when I apply that to my own life, I say, look, I have to believe it. From the time I started, there's no pain. I have no pain. The tumors have shrunk. And I've been able to realize that God's will is being played out each and every day. I know that it's going to end in victory. And it's going to be his victory for his church. So that's my experience in knowing that it is true that hope supports the soul being raised up in faith. But the most important part of this message, and I think it's really the message of Christmas, the birth of Christ, is that Mother Seton says, and love says, just let it be. And there's no better way to say that other than to say that every morning I wake up, I don't live to live another day. I live to serve another day. And I think when we think of the child Jesus as a child, he experiences everything we did as children, but he allows himself to come to us in a way we can accept him fully and then grow with him in the knowing and understanding of the Father's will by his loving teachings and healing and forgiveness. Love really means living out that soul soaring and living out to know that you have the support to do so. So my Christmas message really for you is to look at that Magnificat in Luke's Gospel where Mary proclaims that she has been looked upon in her lowliness. That's the disposition of Christmas, lowliness. You can't do it by yourself. I can't do it by myself. Loneliness means that we allow God to enter into the picture. And that even when our body doesn't have the energy to show or act in a way that we're so used to controlling, our soul will lift it up. Our soul will continue to magnify our ministry. And that ministry is my priesthood. Your ministry is your vocation. Your ministry with me is to proclaim the coming of the Savior so that our souls may be magnified by his divine presence. It seems long since I talked to you last about my physical health. That was back on December 9th. And that was right before I was going for my 11th treatment. And I really didn't have much to share with you because my blood work hadn't come back and the cancer markers weren't back yet. Uh, but they came back that following day, and the blood work was excellent. Uh, the uh, cancer markers, um, again, showing a remarkable uh, uh, um, health there in the, in the liver and the pancreas. I, my numbers are more than normal, uh, showing that the size of the uh, tumors are shrinking. So that was all good and gave my doctor 
you know, a lot of uh, hope for what would come next. When I met him before my 11th treatment I had, and, and we talked about what would be coming next. And, of course, after that treatment, which is going to be Monday after Christmas, uh, will be my next uh, treatment. Then the following week, we'll, I'll do the scans, and then the doctor will know exactly where we are for what we'll do next. And, and uh, it's funny because he always, you know, he's, he's, he knows that I'm doing so well, and he always crosses his fingers, right? But now... Now he knows I'm doing so well that he crosses his fingers and he goes like this. And so I think we, we have him in the right frame of mind that, yeah, we'll cross our fingers, but there's a lot more than crossing our fingers. We're pretty, pretty, pretty much more crossing our fingers. And I love watching him add God to the picture. But what the plan is, I will have my chemotherapy on the 27th uh, that week. Uh, then the following week, I will have the scans uh, the CT scans so they can actually see what's going on and then the doctor will know exactly what uh, the plan will be for the chemo. I already know that we're going to do um, January 14th will be my next chemo and we'll probably do every other week for six sessions uh, but not really sure exactly uh, what kind of treatment it will be. I'm hoping and praying as our little miracles keep coming our way is that the harshest chemotherapy will be removed and that is the one that gives me the numbness in my hands and the coldness and uh, uh, most of the side effects that I struggle from is from that really harsh chemo so if that is taken away from me I can only imagine how much better I'm going to feel and recover quite quickly. Uh, I would have to be honest with you and say cumulatively uh, that the 11th chemotherapy uh, has uh, made it more difficult. Uh, I've been a little bit more fatigued longer. Uh, this is uh, seven days after, eight days after I start feeling really good and today I feel great. So I just wanted to share that with you so that you know where I'm going in regards to the plan of chemotherapy uh, so that uh, you can continue to pray. But more importantly, I just wanted to let you know that for Christmas Masses, uh, I'll be celebrating the Christmas Eve 4 p.m. Mass here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. And on Christmas Eve, I will be celebrating 8 and midnight, which I love the midnight Mass, down in Immaculate Conception. And on Christmas morning, I will be uh, here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. So I wish you and all your families a very Merry Christmas. And my prayer will be for at every Mass will be that the experience of Christmas this year will allow your soul to be magnified in the Lord, that he takes your lowliness, whatever brokenness, whatever we're struggling with, and he'll raise it up.